suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Stone Appetit. With your host, as always, it's me, Kip, and I'm coming to you from the heart of Vegas. We're sitting in the middle of the convention center for part three of the MJ BizCon company series. We're talking all things cannabis this week, and I'm fired up. We actually have repeat guest from Da Vinci, I guess we'll call it Da Vinci Vaporizers? Da Vinci Tech. Da Vinci Tech. Who builds uh, vaporizers. There we go. That builds yeah. vaporizers. But that voice you vaguely heard was our friend Court Smith, who has joined us before. So now he's a repeat guest, but this time he's in person. So we're going to have some fun. Yeah. How are you today, brother? Doing good, Kip. That's good what to I, see you. Good to see you, man. Yeah. So for those that don't recall, I think it was probably right around COVID times, a little bit somewhere in the middle. Yep. We had Court join us on the podcast to talk about all things Da Vinci. They had recently, I think it was the IQ2 that they had released, which is a dry weed vaporizer. And guys, we, we nerded out. We talked highly specific, technical, fun questions. But today we have Court back on the pod because we have a new product on the line. They've released something new this summer that he's telling everybody about at MJ BizCon, and we had to sit down and goof off with the bungee king himself. <laughs> uh, so, Corp, I appreciate you taking the time to goof off with us today. Thanks for having me, Kip. So, we're in your backyard. This is Vegas. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Vegas resident. This is it's easy for us to come to these shows, and we get to bring all the staff and show them what we do, and, and then at night we get to go home. That's the best part. You know, you can play as long as you want, but at the end, you get to rest your feet in your own yeah, bag. Yeah, you know who's not a resident because tomorrow morning you see the bags under their eyes and they're they're walking a little different because they've, they've been out clubbing till the wee hours. So. so are you saying you're not going to do that? Or are you just saying that you're weathered to the point where you're conditioned I, yeah, for this no, environment? I, I think at, at expert level, when you have 20 years in Vegas and you've done that enough, you pick and choose those moments, right? You're selective on your, your club night out. So what night, I mean, and we were talking about this before the podcast started. You've been here since the evolution of MJ BizCon. It's yeah. now in its 10th year. Yeah. And you've been here since well before the, you know, preceded this and in the industry. Yeah, no, and, and ten, this is our 10th year anniversary of, of with the vape company. So, you know, we kind of feel like we started right at, at the, you know, the first waves of, of growth and, and saw the evolution. And it's funny, a comment I was at a couple booths ago looking talking to buddies saying, wow, Ten years ago, I thought that legalization meant that we'd all just grow a plant in our backyard, right? Because it was the bust was you'd you know grow a plant and get caught. And funny how ten years ago we thought that you know you'd have a plant in your backyard, and that's not what happened, right? The word dispensary came up. Like now, now everyone knows what it is. We didn't have a dispensary ten years ago. You know, it's, I mean, the world has shifted not only in like how we view cannabis, but also, I mean, cannabis itself, like. Two aisles to now, you have 9,000 rows up here with, like, 15 companies. This is a holy, like, this is the mecca of cannabis-like events. How does one kind of find their way into this and separate themselves, you know, as a veteran that's been successful yeah. in the field? A lot of people ask the question, like, hey, how do I get into the green space? You know, what's what's the opportunities? Um, for me, I, you know, my, my voice would say, if you're going to be great at something in life, you, you better love it because there's someone who's going to you know love doing what they do more than you. So if you're going to be great at it, you better love what you're doing or don't plan on being a success there. And with the with the hemp, you know, weed industry, it's easy to love it. It's easy to have passion for something you like. And I just made it, you know a career choice that hey, I'm only going to do things I like because going home with a smile is the most important thing. And if you don't like what you're doing, you better find a new path. Dude, okay, so I was talking to a gentleman who's from Austria who lives in Southern California, literally this morning, waiting for the gates to open, who said the literal same thing. Mm. He was like, if you, you know, he made the cliche comment, you know, you don't work a day in your life if you're happy. And that's right. a common theme here. It's people that are kind of immersed in a culture of 
they believe not only in this plant, but also in this booming industry that is just taken off. Well, you know, just right before your eyes. And I'm new to the industry. Yeah, and it, the tone has changed. It's a lot more business now. It I, is. Was it used to be crunchy? Like, did you have more like it looked a little bit more like pre-show vibes? Crunchy. I love that word. Um, yeah, it was much more crunchy early years. Because I noticed when I walked in, I was like, "This is a lot of fucking suits," you know. And yeah. I, I get it. You know, it's a it's an industry. And well, this, it's is, a this is a suit show. This is this is Blazer Capital. Silicon Valley guys come in. They got to put their little, you know, get your your Converse shoes on, but you got a blazer on the top. It's kind of like having a mullet, you know, business in the front, party in the back. They're like, hey, I'm still cool, but I'm here to but work But I got to look well. respectable. Yeah. I, yeah. If we take a picture, they'll get me from the waist up. Yeah, waist up yeah. shots. It's like the Zoom when we did it. We both know you're in your underwear in your office. Don't yep. lie. I mean, you're drinking whiskey, having fun. Yeah, I, I'm nostalgic in, in a lot of respect for like the early OGs. When I, we started first doing shows, and particularly Europe was what struck me, was they had been, I think they had shows legally longer than we had so when you got there it just felt more mature they were further down the path of the conversation 10 years ago in America you, you couldn't say the word marijuana if you were at a show you had to say dry herb you know flower uh, medicinals you could not say the M word you know it's like going into a smoke shop and saying you can't say the word bong you can say water pipe exactly. but don't say bong and or like, yeah, like, Europeans were, were way past that it was legal to grow legal to carry so they go to Spain and they, they, they walk in with their own herb, they pack it into your vape, and they, they sample your machine right there on the show. Now, there's there's no sampling going on today, in, you know, at least at, at least not out in the open. Yeah, not like allowed. Right, I've right. noticed a couple, you know, shout out to our friends over at Seed and Smith, the casual dart pen pool. You know, it's been very subtle, but right. yeah. Do you see that it's going to go that way? Like, as we've seen such progression over the last 10 years, would you sure. see that? Maybe not at the suit show. Yeah. Right. This Un- is a little unpacked. buttoned up. This is a little uh, buttoned up. But if you, there's other shows that I think the consumption is, uh, I don't say it, more spirited. Yeah, more, more out there. The once yeah. we get out of here, the yes, next thing is Yes, yes, yes. Well, and that's also day one, you know. Maybe by Friday, this place will be one big smoky cloud in here. Dude, I feel like it's going to. It's like that and the masks as the day is going on. <laughs> the, the, the give a fuck. Smoke have gone goes to, up, mask goes down. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, weird I can't how that breathe. works. It's weird how that works. Well, speaking of smoke and catching a fade, let's talk a little bit about Da Vinci. You know, since we last spoke, I, I kind of tipped on the IQ2, yep. which was a dry vape that was revolutionizing the scene because of. I guess the technology that you created, but y'all unleashed the beast yet again. We have an IQC that is now on the market. IQC is, is the, is the latest mean? baby. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, I mean, we're in the process of developing a number of machines at DaVinci. Like that, it's it's fun to think that I walk into a lab every day, and we get to dream about ways that we can uh, ingest our cannabis. So from concentrate, you know, oils, waxes to the dry herb side. Uh, I, I get to play with all the toys, and and you know it's it's kind of like being a kid with his own Lego set. You know, like hey, what what kind of mousetrap can we build today? And gosh, we we've prototyped and smoked out of probably 20 plus different vaporizers of various contraptions. You know, some of them not such great ideas. Is this like the Boston dynamics of weed, like smoking? <laughs> is what I kind of think. It's like y'all have some like robotic arm that's bringing a joint to the yeah, office. Yeah, we have the robotic dog that would run over and serve you your your. Yeah, yes. here's Come your on. hit. You're so close. I know you're a genius. I've seen it in your products already. Uh, Make the dog do it. Steal the Boston it. Scientific dog or whatever, Boston Dynamics, yeah. and then make it do the joint. Rover, light me up with a, a, high, a high dose. What if his mouth, like, opened and it was very, Doosh. yeah, it was just fire. It's like, this is going to be brutally bad in the future, but it's very advantageous. Yeah, people right like your dog. Yeah. Can we borrow your dog? <laughs> yeah. Bring your dog over, will you? But uh, we can't bring our kids over. It's kind of a peculiar <laughs> situation. But if you walk that dog to the park, do you think you'll pick up the ladies the same? I, You know, it depends on, if you're in, like, Silicon Valley, yeah. But I don't know. Like in Denver, no. They're all about the mutts. They don't want those clean-cut, you know, Boston dynamics. Uh, <laughs> so it depends on the scene. But, yeah. uh, I, you know, I whatever. Tangents galore. Let's get back to the IQC. What, all right. What, what separates us from the field? Tell us a little bit about why folks are puffing on it and why it's so highly re- regarded. A lot of the, you know, the, the, the material science we're using right now was instigated out of something we call vape cake. A couple years ago, there were people dying off of, you know, bad vaporizers and 
and lung lung issues, and we looked really hard, and it was a threat. I mean, everybody in the industry got hit from that and said people got scared of vaporizers. And we had a, a good realization that said we realized that we had made good choices at the beginning of what we started when we designed our machines, and we put clean materials into our machines, you know, from 10 years ago. And in hindsight, like, what, what a great decision. You know, we didn't know that cleanliness and taste would be such a, a determining factor. And now that we've kind of earned that reputation, like, people know they buy Da Vinci. This is going to be the best selected materials, the cleanest vapor experience. And so our reputation hinges on we need to provide that that assurity for the customers. Like, hey, if you, if you vape from this, this is the cleanest way to do it. This is a glass-on-glass, glass, best tasting, you know, a lot of safety measures put into something that people trust their passions of life with. So... I'm, I'm also that guy. I'm kind of a gearhead. I, if you're going to buy something, go out and get the best piece of gear and don't regret it. And then you enjoy that you know, for, for many, many rounds. No, and you're right in that regard because there's a lot of people that want to be able to taste and enjoy the flower benefits without maybe you know having to roast a full bone or something like that. And so having this experience, you know, this higher level experience that you can literally dial down to the temperature. So if you want to slow right. roll it or if you want to roast that thing and fucking get torched, you can dictate how you want to catch your fade no matter what. So yep. you all kind of dialed in the experience no matter the smoker. Yeah, no, and the IQC, this is, you know, we kind of refer to this as, as the party wagon, too, because it has a, a large enough bowl and a big battery that if you set out for the night, um, boy, you better have a large family. You could, you can put the whole house down. Hell, yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's going to give you the, the cal performance. Cal yeah, it's a 50 yeah. cal. Uh, it's not, you know, different than, say, one of our competitors would be the volcano, right, where you, you put it into a big bag and you huff off that. That's a very different approach. Same net result, but this is a little more discreet. You know, you don't want to walk around the trash bag huffing things. This, this you can do more subtly. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, it fits in the palm of your hand, so it's obviously a more comfortable pin that you can carry around with or, you know, apparatus. I guess it wouldn't be considered yeah. a pin. But the, the comment we just heard was that, hey, this fits in my cup holder in my car. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I can endorse that thought, but, yeah, it does. It does fit in a cup holder in the car. We can endorse that all the time. That's, <laughs> yeah, and it definitely does. And at the same time, traffic in Denver sucks. So I, I get that completely for those uh, that are in that situation. Yeah. Um, for those that wanted to buy the, you know, any of the Da Vinci line, where would we go about it? Where can we learn more about the product? You know, the, the DaVinciTech.com site has a lot of information on, on our product and the usages, tutorials, how to use, how to clean, how to get the best hits. Um, I also think there's a lot of value going out to the open market. There's a lot of people on YouTube that give give reviews, try to find the open, neutral ones, because a lot of people are expressing whatever pays them money. But I, I'm really happy. The people that come out and review our products, and with a fair voice, we, we, we come out on top. They really, they really appreciate the engineering and what we've done, and... Uh, it's kind of like the product, you know, speak for itself. Repetition.